I'm Farhad Manju for Slate V. For the last few months, I've been looking into the rise of robotics and artificial intelligence software in American workplaces. As I was analyzing real life robots in science, medicine, journalism, and the law, one thing that struck me was how different they are from robots that we're used to seeing in movies and on TV. For starters, on screen you usually find robots doing humans dirty work. Look at Wally. He's a waste collection robot. Or remember those butler robots in Woody Allen's Sleeper? Are you thirsty, Mr. Monroe? Me? No. No, thank you. Today's robots aren't anywhere close to being able to do the kind of work that robot maids do. Take Rosie from the Jetsons. She can recognize objects. She speaks and understands English. Come and get it. She has fine motor skills. She can navigate through a whole apartment. All these skills are very difficult for our real life robots. Creating machines that can manipulate the physical environment in the way that a human can is one of the most challenging tasks in robotics. And here's the irony. While today's robots aren't very good at doing our dirty work, they're great at doing our mental work. Part of the reason is that computers are getting much better at understanding language. The movies have long suggested that when computers acquire speech, we'll control them just by talking to them. You know, like the computer in Star Trek. Computers send a subspace message. Starfleet Command. Security channel authorization. Alpha 47 authorization required to activate security channel. Modern speech recognition isn't as good as that, although it's quickly improving. But the real advantage in computers learning language is that they can start to understand documents. Today, legal robots can search through a whole stack of evidence in a complicated trial and discover incriminating emails, for example. And robots can also be creative. There are now machines that can write sports stories. Software can also be funny. Researchers recently created a computer that's sure to amuse fans of The Office. It can recognize when it would be hilarious to say, That's what she said! <laughs> when computers are shown to be funny, the joke is usually that they fail to understand human sensibilities. Like Vicky from Small Wonder. I'm not programmed to smile. Well, then I'll program you to. This is a smile. <laughs> Got it? Got it. <laughs> and computers are rarely shown to be creative. They're almost always portrayed as rigid, single-minded, bent on their pre-programmed mission. There are exceptions, of course. In Star Wars, R2-D2 seems to understand funny when he sees it. Help! I think I'm melting! This is all your fault! <laughs> and then there's Hal from 2001. He about. certainly reacts creatively when he sees a threat to his mission. I know that you and Frank were planning to disconnect me. And I'm afraid that's something I cannot allow to happen. But the most interesting thing about Hal is the work he does. He's identified as a crew member on board the ship, and he takes care of most of the ship's functions. He renders the humans almost irrelevant. In a few years' time, after the robots have taken all our jobs, we may come to see that as a pretty good call. This conversation can serve no purpose anymore. Goodbye. Hal? 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 